Hey guys, it's uh, Sam for Digital Meet again, and this is part two of um, setting up a player character with Mechanim and Playmaker in Unity. So if you remember from the um, last tutorial, part one, um, we've got we've got our guy here, um, and if I just pick up the Xbox controller and hit play, uh, we've got him in his idle state there and he's connected to the uh, FPS controller so we can move around and whatnot. And uh, if I just pause that there, uh, stop it and go to the animator window. We've set up these um, uh, pa uh, parameters and they're being set by some FSMs we made on our character. So this is basically uh, picking up the forwards and backwards from the axis and then uh, it's setting the animator float, which is, um, that's the vertical one, excuse me. So that's forwards and backwards is the vertical axis, which sets this. And then we've got an FSM that is doing the strafe, which is getting the horizontal axis and that's setting this parameter. And we've also got a walking speed and we're taking the, we're using this get axis vector to store a magnitude. And then we're sending that to the anim uh, this parameter, walking speed. So uh, in the last tutorial, we set up this blend tree. So if I double click on an empty space, I can come out of that. So we've got this, we've got this idle. And uh, then we set up this uh, uh, locomotion blend, blend tree. And if we double click on that, we set up a blend into two other blends. Um, so I suppose we should start populating these with our animations. So, um, what I'm half considering is to delete this and, um, start again, just so we're, you know, if you forgot where we started off from, we can do it again. So all we do is right click, create state from new blend tree. It creates this. I'm going to call this locomotion, locomotion. Brilliant. We're going to go into it and we've got this blend tree in there. We're just going to name this locomotion as well. Loco motion. And then from this, we're going to add a blend tree. So we get another one. So we're going to call this blend tree walk. And um, I think I'm just going to deal with the walk for, for the time being. So in this walk, if we highlight it, we need some motion to go in there. So um, it, at the top here, you can see blend type and it says 1D. And um, we're actually going to be using um, a 2D simple directional. So if you hit this and you've got these choices here, um, we want simple directional. Uh, the, the reason I'm going to be using simple directional is because say um, we took a value from the vertical, you can actually have it go from a walk into a run the further you push the stick up. But if you remember our run buttons, the trigger button. So we wouldn't need this sort of extra one here. The simple directional, you can just, um, you get one animation in sort of your directions if you like. So this is all we need, the 2D simple directional, but we're gonna need to add some motion to this. So let's add, a motion field let's add five motion fields actually and as you can see once you get more than one it opens up this window so, uh, one two three four five okay that's great and uh, the parameters that we want up here you can see that both parameters are set to vertical we actually want this first one to horizontal so that's our first parameter and the second one's going to be vertical. So this is basically saying it's taking this parameter. That's what's controlling this sort of blend, blending the motions window. So the horizontal all will be represented by position X. So that's this way. And the vertical is going to be represented this way, obviously up and down and that's position Y. So that's what we want in our parameters. Okay. Let's get our animations in. Um, so if you remember, we had this animator folder and animation clips. So if we just twirl that down, um, okay. 
So this is just our walk. This is our walk stuff. So we've got character walking down here. So I'm just going to flip this open. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to select this first, and let's and go to the animation tab, and let's have a look at the state of this thing. Well, the walk has got no loop time, so we'd want a loop time. And as before, we're going to set everything to original. Apart from this root transform Y, we're going to bake that into pose. And then we're going to hit apply. Okay, now if we go back to our walk, that's, we're going to, um, you can't drag the FBX itself in there. Not that I, th no, you can't. Um, so what you need to do is twirl that down and grab the animation clip and um, whack that in there. Don't worry about the, this at the moment. We're just going to populate this with our motions first. So, so we've got our idle. Now, what do we want? We want, um, oh, sorry, that's our walking, isn't it? Um, yeah, I wonder if I can clear this. Yeah, okay. I want to choose none there. Uh, we actually want our walking in the second slot there. Um, Okay. Mm. Do, 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 do. Okay. Right. Um, so the top one, I want idle, walking, walking backwards, and then we're going to have our strafes at the bottom there, um, just to keep it nice and tidy. So uh, where's our idle? There we go. Character idle. It's this one. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I think we already set this one up, but let's make sure. We've got loop time. Yeah, original, original. Yeah, lovely. Brilliant. Okay. So go back to our walk in, flip open the idle, and grab the idle and put it at the top there. So we've got our walk in. Um, now, have we got a walk in backwards? Character walking backwards. Yes, we have. Let's have a look at this. We'll see. What's he up to? Ah, now our walking backwards is actually just a duplicate of walking. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, select your walking and press Control D, and it will make a copy. Um, and then I just renamed it to walking backwards. Now it's actually the same animation, but we can control um, how it looks by its um, animation speed. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute, but we need to sort this out. So let's select our walking backwards. We need a loop time as always. I'm going to flip these to original. Bake the root transform with the Y position and then obviously apply those changes. So now we've got our walking backwards. Okay. So click back on our walk and then we can twirl this down drag our animation in. Now, the walking backwards is actually the same as the walking forwards animation. But as you can see, this uh, we've got position X, position Y. We'll come to that in a minute. But we've got this value here, which is changes animation speed. Now, if you put a mi if you make this minus one instead of one, it will play the clip backwards. So that's that's why it's our walking backwards. I know what you're thinking, why didn't you just drag another copy of the walking in and play and play that backwards there? You can't do that. You have to make a copy of the clip. So if you want to um, play one of the clips you've got in another direction and you've already got using that clip in your scene or whatever, you need to make a copy of it. So that's why I've done that. Okay, so what do we need now then? Um, I'm just gonna close the Playmaker window. Um, so I can drag this out. There we go. And we can see all our, our names now. Okay. So we've got left strafe walk in here. Let's have a look at the, there we go. Come on. The animation. Okay. There we go. So there's some things we need to change because they don't look quite right. So let's go down. We'll give it a loop time. We'll make sure the, um, Everything's set to original. Yeah. And the root transform Y. We're going to bake into pose, apply that. Okay, now let's have a look now then. There you go. Okay, that's fine. 
that'll do us nicely. And we might as well do the right strafe walking while we're here. Uh, loop time. Ba -ba -bum. Original, original, original. Bake into pose. Apply. Okay, so if we click back on our walk thing now, we can um, we can uh, populate these fields here. So we've got this left strafe walking. We're going to drag that motion in, and we're going to need our right strafe walking. Right. Okay. So now in our blend tree, then um, just going to squish this up a little bit there we go so this is what our blend tree looks like now we've got our walk uh, and then it goes into our walk blend tree and it can blend between these things here um, so I'll click on the walk our idle when do we want that to be happening um, well it's dictated by our horizontal and vertical which is basically our left thumbstick. So if you imagine this is a map of our left thumbstick, we'd want the idle to be happening when you, you're not pushing up or down or left or right. So that'll be in the middle. So this needs to be zero and that needs to be zero, which is absolutely fine. Um, just open this up a little bit. Our walking. When do we want that to be happening? Well, we want that to happen when we push up on the controller. Um, up on the left thumbstick so that would be our position Y I'm going to set this to 1 so as you can see it's put that little dot at the at the top there unfortunately there's this little message covering it slightly that'll go away in a minute which is exactly what we want walking backwards that would obviously be when you um, press backwards on the controller so at the moment we've got minus 1 in our X here which is over here somewhere well it's actually this one here we don't want that, we want that to be zero. But we want our Y to be minus one, because that that's like when we're when you're pushing back on the thumbstick. So now you can see we've got our walking at plus one up here, we've got our backwards walking at minus one down here. So I think you can probably guess what we're gonna do with the left and right right strafe. We're gonna uh its Y position is gonna be zero for both of them. Um, but the left strafe walk is going to be minus one. That will push it over to the left. There we go. And the right strafe walk is going to be one, which will push it over to the to the right there. So there you go. You've got an idea of how it's all linking up now. Um, so when we walk in, these animations are going to play. So I suppose... I could just press play and we can see what happens. Now, I know that nothing's gonna happen. Nope, and it's because we're not rigged up properly. And uh, I'll, I'll just come into this now. If we go back to the animator and come out of this, you'll see that um, in our state machine, we've got our entry into what's happening to an idle state, but there's no link between our idle state and this locomotion state. So what do we do? Well, we're going to need to create some transitions. So I'm going to right click on idle and say make transition. It will create this little arrow and click on locomotion. And then I'm going to right click on locomotion, make transition and click on the idle. So now we've got states that, um, that can come uh, to and from our idle state. So you can actually uh, click on these transitions and we can actually choose what's gonna what's gonna happen so what are the can uh, let's have a look at the on the right here um first of all what happens is this if i uh, pull this up and then come on where are you it doesn't want to let me click on it for some reason there we go if i press play now it's going to actually show our transition from idle to locomotion. Um, and not a lot is happening there. Which it shouldn't have to be actually because our default state in locomotion is idle as well in the middle of the controller. So, um, But uh, you'll notice that we've got this box ticks here. It has exit time. 
So basically, when you let off the, the thumbstick, what an exit time means is that if it's playing an idle and then you push your thumbstick up to to move, to go into locomotion, if it's got an exit time, it will have to play the entirety of the idle animation before it blends into the locomotion. So we don't want that. We want it to happen immediately. So we're going to take off our has exit time. And then we've got a list of conditions here. So it's saying um, it's basically conditions to make this transition happen from idle to locomotion. Now, in our case, we're going to use one of our parameters. This is the whole point of setting up these parameters. Um, we're going to use walking speed um, as our parameter to move into the locomotion state. So I'm going to add a condition You just press this little plus here. Um, it's come up with vertical. We don't want that. We want our walking speed. You can see here that the, this list of conditions uh, mimics our list up here. So I'm going to pick our walking speed and I'm going to say if our walking speed is greater than a certain amount, it transitions into the locomotion. So what walking speed do we want? Well, if we stood still, we're at zero. And if you push up on your controller, you're going to start moving. So I'm going to pick a low low amount I'm going to say 0.1 that should be enough for us and so I can get I, I, I I'm pretty sure you can guess what the transition back is going to be so if you click on on that see uh, our transition back from locomotion back to idle um, we don't want an exit time and we want to make a condition for that which is going to be if our walking speed is less than 0.1 um that's when it transitions back to idle okay so i think we are we're going to be quite happy with that and that looks good to me so what happens when we hit play now then let's hit play okay things don't quite look right but you can see that he's got animations on him But it's not quite what we were expecting, <laughs> which is good. So let's unpause this and go back to our animator window. So this stuff is all good. Let's go into our locomotion window. So this is what we set up. First of all, we've got our blend. Um, and uh, we've only got one thing it in it at the moment, but we will actually populate this with more stuff. Now, if we click on this first one, it's, if we look at the top, it's parameter is vertical. Now we don't want that. We, we want this blend to, to happen. Well, I suppose let's add it. Let's add another blend tree first, and we're going to call this one run. Okay, so we're going to call this run or running, one of the two. Um, running. Okay, so there we go. We've got a blend now. Now, see, so we've got walk and running. Now, if I click on this, um, what determines what blends between walk and running is this parameter up here, which is vertical but we don't want it to be vertical. We want it to be our walk speed because obviously when we're running, it's quicker. So we're going to change this to walking speed and we can leave our blend type to 1D because that's fine for this. And as you can see here, um, we, this shows our, our blend. Excuse me. That shows when our two motions blend, but in our, our case here, it isn't two motions. It's two other blend trees. It's this and this that are being blended. And that's why you've got this little blend tree thing at the top. Um, and uh, you'll notice that it's got a threshold here. It says automate threshold, but I'm going to actually remove that. And you can say compute thresholds, but we're not going to do that either. Um, because our parameter is walking speed, it will say it, up here, it's going to say, what's the threshold? So basically for walk, our motion for walk, you'll know that um, 
from before when when we walk forwards at full tilt this is 1.5 so that's going to be our threshold for walking 1.5 and our threshold for running uh if you remember from the last tutorial when you right, hold the right trigger button down um it increases the speed to 3.5 so that'll be the threshold for um running so now any any value between 1.5 and 3.5 will be there'll be a blend between this and this okay so that's so that's that sorted we're not too concerned about the running at the moment we're just trying to get our walk set up properly but i just wanted to make sure that you understood how this was blending between it's going to be blending between the walk and running okay so let's go to our walk um so at least now yeah it's walking speed brilliant okay so this walk horizontal vertical and we've got all our stuff set up there and that's absolutely fine excellent so let's go back to our game window and press play now what's going on here i'm pressing left and he's walking right i'm pressing right and he's walking left and if i press back he's walking backwards and if I press forwards and that's because we're we're facing him and he's facing us so that's where the problem lies um so if you select our character and in this value here where it says 180 you just put that back down to zero and then play you'll see that when i uh, press left he walks left when i press right he walks right but you can see that there's there's an offset okay so let's uh, quit out of this okay you'll probably notice a break there i had to uh, get my head together um the reason that this is happening uh that we just saw a minute ago that he's walking faster than than our player is and walking off into the distance and yeah he should not fall because yeah okay that makes sense okay the reason that that is happening is because on our character if we click on our character we've got this um on our animator we've got this ticked apply root motion so um we can we can take this off basically and um he should now move with us fingers crossed there we go so that's not bad actually already that's not bad um obviously that's not very smooth animation there but um he's walking forwards and if you press strafe he'll strafe left if you strafe right, it will strafe, strafe right. And backwards, he'll walk backwards. And you can do a blend between these two things. So obviously, walking forwards is one animation, strafing right is another. But if you do sort of like a diagonal, he'll blend between the two. And that's not bad. That, that's not bad at all, really. Okay. So, but you can see there is a little bit of a problem. And I'm going to demonstrate this by... Uh, in fact, I want to change the um, I want to change the texture on the floor actually. So if we open up our assets folder, go into imports, and go into our texture folder, I'm gonna just grab a texture that I've got here, which is like a grid, an UV grid. It's basically a checkerboard. Um, come on. So I wait for my drive to wake up. There you go. Um, it's basically a checkerboard and it's just so i can see if his feet are slipping or not so i'm just going to close my animation clips up and that open my text uh choose the floor and we've got this uh, material on the floor here and i'm going to lob this texture in the albedo i'm going to turn this to white so it's not tinted and um uh, what else do i want to do with that du -du 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 -du. I also probably want to um, uh, tile it as well, don't I? Just so it's a little bit more. 15 should do it. Yeah, 15 is great. Okay, so now we can have a look at the floor and our guy. And you'll notice that it's not, it's not too bad, actually. Um, he's hovering above the floor a little bit, and we'll fix that in a second. And... Um, But yeah, it's not too bad. 
but like I said, he is hovering. And you'll notice that if we go full tilt, so if I strafe to the um, left now, and I'm push, pushing fully left, he looks quite good and, you know, he's not really slipping, but, and if I do it to the right, same story. But if I just incrementally push the thumbstick a little bit, you can see that we're moving and his animation is playing really, really slow. And it's only until we start building up that, um, you know, so we get massive slipping there. It's only when we start building up that, you know, he gets up to his animation. So let's look at addressing that and fixing that. So I press escape, uh, go back to our animator window. Um, and we're going to click on our walking because this is where all this action is happening. And um, what we can do is we can scroll down and um, adjust the time scale. So you've got this homogeneous speed and that's what we're going to use. But before I do that, just to note from before, we've got our walking backwards animation and we've got a minus one speed. So when we do this homogenized speed, let's click that, boom. Oh. Maybe it's because I had this selected that it didn't actually come on. There we go. So let's just make sure I'm on speed. Yeah. So now we've got all these new values. We can actually go to this and put a minus in front of it to make sure that it plays backwards again. I'm going to hit play again. Okay. So homogenous speed seems to be working. Not really any slipping. But if I press it a little bit, you can see that <laughs> forward's a good example. If you just push it a little bit, oh no, he didn't really want to, didn't really want to get there. It is still a little bit weird, I suppose. But yeah, if you've got a little value on there, he'll at least, you know, take baby steps until you. That is strange. Really strange, actually. Hmm. So let's have a look at how we can sort of get rid of some of these issues. Let's have a look. Uh, let's go back to our animator window, go to our walk. Okay, so we've got an homogenized speed there. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so we've got walking, walking backwards. I'm just going to close this lot up. Go to our animation clips. Walking backwards. Just want to check that everything's... Okay, yeah, we've got some animation compression going on here as well. So I'm going to fix that for a minute. So I'm going to go to walk. That's off. Walking backwards. That's on optimal. So let's turn that off as well. Lovely. Um... What else did we have? We had our right strafe walking. I think that's it. Yep. Let's take that off. We can always reduce our keyframes later. Um, so that's fine. Left strafe walking. That's on optimal. We want to take that off. Um, what else do we have? We've got walking, walking backwards, left and right strafe. I think that's it. Apart from our idle which I think already has the animation compression off. So, yeah, that's fine to me. We go back to this. We can probably um, adjust our time scales again. Just so it's right. And obviously you can see the idle time scale up here is like 75,000. I think it's because of the length of the clip, but um, really we don't we don't need that and for this i found that the let's let's just pray, press play actually because even though we've got an idle in here it's kind of like a placeholder because as soon as the speed drops below um, 0 0.1 it goes back to this idle state anyway um, um via these um, transition events so it shouldn't affect us too badly really it shouldn't affect us at all so let's give it another go okay so yeah not bad 
I think the reason it probably looks like it's sliding is because of... Um... <laughs> it's still funny to me. <laughs> We're still getting a bit of sliding backwards, which is weird. Yeah, that is strange. Okay. First of all, let's fix this hovering. Let's, um, let's see what that's all about. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear off the game window and lob it here for a minute. Push all this in. And then in our scene view, I'm just going to... Um, let's see if I can grab the character and zoom in on him. Okay. Let's get a good view of his feet. There we go. So when we hit play, you can see that it'll pop up. Yeah, quite a bit as well. And it's because our um, FPS controller, if I select it, it's uh, got a rigid body. Let's, um, let's have a look at that, actually. Let's see what kind of... Select that, press F to frame it. Let's just have a look. Well, it's right on the floor for starters. Um, in fact, we can see where it is. If we just click this, um, we can see a. We can see where it is resting on the floor there. Yeah, it's right on it. Now, the reason it pops up when you press play is because of um, it's. We've got a skin width here, which is actually currently set to uh, this value here, which is 0 0.08. So we could make that. Um, we could actually make that skin width lower. And I think I might do that for now. I'm just going to whack it down to 0.2. Actually, when I pause, it will probably flip back. Yeah, it, it has. Um, some things you can't... Well, you can't make changes when you're playing because they'll revert back to what they were. Um, so I'm going to change that to 0.2. So now when we press play, it should jump up a lot less. Yeah, it does which means in turn our guy is going to jump up less so if we go back to his feet again we should see that he's um he does pop up a little bit but not as much as he did before so if we drag our grab our character don't worry about this thing jumping around in the middle while it's playing there's something to do with root motion i believe um but you can still see he's got a bit of hover on him okay so I'm going to change his Y position here. Um, I'm just going to bring it down slightly. Oh, bit too much. Not seven six, nor seven eight, maybe. Well, he's definitely connecting with the floor there. Maybe a little bit too much, actually. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at him. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's all right. Maybe a little bit too much. I might change that to 0 77. 7. Uh, let's make this 0 7. I think somewhere between 0 77 7 and 0 78 is a good value. So 0 77 5. That should do us. But on yours, it might give you know, it might tell you a different value there or whatever. But um, for me, that value works. But that's all you've got to do. So obviously when I press stop on this, this value is going to disappear. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab that and copy it. And now he's there. I'm going to change that in here. And if we take a look at him now, it looks like his feet are through the floor, but we don't have to worry about that because when we hit play, we know that his feet ain't through the floor. Okay. So there's that. Let's get our game window back up here. I'm going to hit play again just to have a look at his feet. There we go. That looks a bit better. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Um, one more thing I'm going to do, just because the lighting looks a bit... You can see, you notice on his back, we can see these blown out areas on his back, which is nearly bright white. Um, that's due to, well, a few things. I mean, we could adjust it in this 
mode if we wanted to, but um, I'm going to go to edit project settings player. There we go. And um, we've got some options here. Uh, in other settings, you under rendering, we want to change the color space from gamma to linear. Anyone that's a Cinema 4D user knows about linear um, workflow or, or should do. Um, and especially when we're using um, the the material in um, in Cinema 4D. Oh, it's, I'm on the game window, that's why. If we select him um, and have a look for his... Where's his material? Is it on his character? Yeah, here we go. So this shader here. Um, it's the standard shader. So if you're going to be using this, really you want to be using a linear color space because... Um, you, you get, you're only going to get true representation of PBR materials like this, physically based, um, in linear, really. So there you go. So you can see the colour is a, a, a lot more... I don't know, the lighting just looks natural now. The fall off of light tends to be a lot better with this, with this kind of setup. Okay, so that's just a little something to take note of. All right, so... We thought we got that going on. So I suppose the um, next step now is to um, sort out the running, which we're going to do in a very similar manner as to how we've done our walking. So let's have a look at this. Um, what we want to do is, again, just like the walking, we've, well, we've got our locomotion and we've already set up our thresholds to decide when it's going to go into this blend tree and when it's going to go into the running blend tree so like the walk we're going to need to do this so let's go to the running let's change this to um 2d simple directional the parameters that we want are horizontal and vertical uh, i think that's the way we add it and like before um we're gonna add five uh motions so one two Three, four, five. Um, let's collapse all this. Open our animation clips, and um, this is partly why we got our. Let me just move my Xbox controller. This is why we, uh, in the future, first tutorial, we grabbed all those different animations from um, uh, Mixamo. Okay, so um, we've got our walking here, um, which we don't need. We need um, we need a run, don't we? So, well, in the first field, like always, we're going to grab our idle. So if we go up to character idle, grab our idle and whack that in there. Um, uh, what are we going to need? Standard run. Okay, so standard run. Now we've got to check the FBX like we did our other one. So if you click on the header of it, oh, and change its name. Uh, animation compression, we're going to take that off. Uh, we're going to make our loop time. Um, set that to original. They're all set to original. Uh, bake into pose for the root transform for Y. Boom. And then we're going to take, click on our run in, drag our standard run into there. And then we're going to need. Um, well, I personally, I've tried. What I did was I actually made a copy of this standard run so I could put it in here. I made a copy, called it standard run backwards and then just reverse the time like I did for walk, but it looks really weird. So what I opted to do in the end was actually take our walking backwards animation and bung that in here instead. And set that to minus one because I think the the run backwards just looks it looks very strange. So I'm going to use the walking backwards. It's up to you though. It's a personal preference. Um, what do we want? We now want the left strafe. Let's sort this out. Take the compression off. Make sure it's got a loop time. Original, original. Yeah, it's already on it. Original. Back into pose for the Y. Apply. Go back to our running, and that was our. Le 
Was that our left strafe? Yeah, it was. Character left strafe. We'll whack that in there. Um, you'd expect it to say left strafe run, but it's the other way around. It says left strafe walk in for the for the walking one. Uh, we want to do the same with our right strafe, which is off for the for that. Um, loop times on. Original, original, original. Ready to pose. Apply. Go back to this, and it's our right strafe. So. There we have it. So now you can see our, if I just move this in a little bit. So there's our walk motions and there's our running all in there. Okay. So if we click on the running again, just going to drag this out so we can see what we're doing. Again, like before the position at X and position Y, it should be zero, zero for idle for the, um, for the standard run, which is forward. We want it one on position Y. Uh, walking backwards, we want it minus one, and we can zero out the X position. So there's that, and then the left strafe should be minus one, and its position Y should be zero, and the right strafe should be one, and this should be zero. Um, oh, I've made it one. There we go. And as before, adjust time scale. Homogeni uh, homogeneous speed. So there we go. So it's made all of that homogeneous. It looks okay to me. Now let's have a look at our route. So we've got our threshold for walking and running here. Um, so let's just test it out. Okay, so we've got our guy walking, and when we press the run button, he's still walking. So we've got a slight problem now. Why is that? And as you can see, he's sliding as well. So that doesn't really help us. Okay. So let's try and fix this. Okay. Uh, we're going to need our Playmaker window back open again. So if we go to Playmaker Editor, it will bring up our window and we can, we can grab this and If it wanted letters, we could um, cram it down the bottom. There we go. Good stuff. Now, let's have a look what's going on here. Um, I'm going to lob the game window to the side for a minute. Oh, I think my computer's crashed. No, nope. there we go. Go to the animator window, and this way we can um, just close this up. And this. Select our character. Hit play, and we can keep a, um, an eye on the walking speed parameter in the animator window. So, okay, if we're walking, it's 1.5. Brilliant. But if we press our run button, yes, it doesn't go up. Even though it affects the um, FPS controller, um, it doesn't actually go above 1.5. So, even though our actual speed is going up, it's not set in that parameter. So let's have a look at the reasons behind this then. Uh, you probably uh, noticed a, a little cut in the video there. That's because I needed to get my ducks in a row again. Um, all right, let's sort this. We've got our walking speed here. That's fine. Um, so all this is doing is we're getting our horizontal and vertical axis and getting the uh, magnitude from it. And then we're setting the animator float up here using that magnitude. That's all very well and good. Um, but we need to incorporate our right trigger run. And what's happening in here is um, we're getting our right trigger press and um, we're adding it to this value. Um, when really we should be adding it to our walk speed and then we're setting a property here. So what I think I'm going to do is incorporate all of this, well, most of this into our walk speed FSM because it makes sense. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that probably makes more sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
this. Well, first of all, let's have a look at our variables. So we've got a right trigger press. Let's have a look at our globals. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so that's being used exactly zero times. And so is the right trigger press. So really, it just needs to be that. Okay, well, I actually do need this right trigger press to be a, um, to use it in my other FSM. I need it to be a global variable. So if we look at our globals now, yep, yeah, that seems good to me. So let's go back to our character. We get our axes vector set animator float. So we're going to need some stuff in between there. And that's where our float add comes in. We're going to rob that copy selected actions. And then I'm going to delete it. Go back to our character. I'm going to then paste it, paste action. And then we've got our float add there. So I'm just going to drag this up. Come on. So we've got our axis vector. And then we're going to get, <coughs> excuse me our float add. Um, so what do we want to do? We want to take our right trigger press and we want to, well, actually, do we want to take that? Let's try it. Let's try it first. We want to get the value of what our right trigger. No, we want to take the value of our walking speed and we want to add our right trigger press to it that seems good to me um, and we also want to oh, we've already multiplied that okay good and then it, that's going to set our animator flow so let's let's see where that leaves us so okay Okay, so we're not actually moving, but that's fine. So we're walking, then I add that and it adds 3.5. Okay. He's running super gay there as well. Good. Okay, cool. Right. <clears throat> so we get our axis vector to get this magnitude. That's great. Then we get our float add. So we add our walking speed to our right trigger press. Fine. And then we set our animator float. Um, and we set our animator float, but we also need to set our property as well. So let's copy this selected action. Go back to our character, go all the way down the bottom and then paste. Um, and what do we need to set the value for? We don't just need to set any value. Oh, no, what we're using to set the value, we're going to use our walking speed to set the value. Yeah, that's right. Cool. So our walking speed is actually going to set the walking speed of this. So I'm just going to lock this window so we can concentrate on that. Go back to our character and let's have a look what's going on. Okay, so we're in an idle state, which is fine. Mm, we're storing our magnitude. Yeah, that's great. Float add, float variable. Okay, let's see what happens to our float. Okay, so my walking speed 1.5, my right trigger press is nothing, and then I add 2 to it when I press the right trigger button. Okay, that seems to be working okay. Let's check everything else. Okay, so let's have a look. First of all, let's deal with our parameter. So it should be 1.5 for walking, so that's me walking. Press the right trigger, goes up to 3.5. Beautiful, that's doing exactly what it should do. Uh, let's have a look over here in our walk speed. So at the moment it's zero. When I'm walking, it's 1.5 or around. And then when I press the trigger, it's around 3.5. Beautiful. That's exactly what we want. So that's getting that. Brilliant. The float of my walking speed, which should be about 1.5, is being added to the right trigger press, which is a 
yeah add two yeah that's fine okay let, let me just uh, go back to the right trigger run oh we got a set property on there still let's remove that action then um okay so we got the da, 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 it stores it in that great hopefully it will still work we can still yeah the property is being set by that yes that's actually more accurate so all we need in our right trigger run now is literally this get axes and store it in this variable which i've made a global variable so it can be sent to our our um our walking speed so that's exactly what we needed uh, the right trigger press is coming in at 1.5 even even when we're idle let's have a look no no it isn't that's fine and everything seems to be working great although that's 1.5 Two. Hmm, I'm wondering about the loop there, but um, let's have a look. So it adds this. So it sets our animator f um, float, which is this. That's great. No damp time. Yeah, so uh, all in all, I think that's good. So let's have a look at it in full, full play. Okay, so we've got our left and right walk, although we're getting a bit of a Yeah, we're getting a bit of a dodgy thing there. I think it's because it goes through zero. It goes back to the idle. But we've got our run there. It looks good. <laughs> He's walking backwards super fast. Okay, a bit of slide in there. And you'll notice actually that even though all of this stuff works, if we just hold down the right trigger, he's shaking, he's having a massive fit. And there is a reason for that too. So let's have a look. Um, if we go back to our animator window, let's get the game window and drag it back up here. Go to animator uh, and go to our running. Uh, oh, I've got this window locked, I'll just take that off. You can see the idle um animation speed there is really really high so i'm actually going to alter this myself and change it to 0.25 that should slow it down because it is a really long clip uh so i didn't really want to be messing around in this tutorial so I, I did that outside of this and now when you hold down the um button for that it seems to be a lot better um but the run still works yep it all looks good So I think that's about uh, covers it for this tutorial. Um, in the next one, I'll be incorporating the crouch into it. We've got this B button crouch already. We, could, um, we set up from a previous tutorial. And the way we did it was we listened for a B button press and then we scaled the FPS controller. But there is a problem associated with that. And I'll show you what it is. Look what happens when I press the B button. Whoop. Oh, we've got a little fella. On our hands. <laughs> there we go. And he's back to normal when you uncrouch. So normal. Peter Dinklage. Back to normal. Um, so we're going to set up our crouch to be obviously a lot better than that. Um, so I'll see you guys for the next tutorial. Uh, as always, don't forget to check out the website. Digitalmeet.uk. The YouTube channel. You can grab me on Twitter as well. That's Digital Meet 3D at Twitter and Facebook, uh, Digital Meet 3D. You'll find us there as well. All right, till next time, guys. Bye.